Okay, guys, today I'm going to talk about a topic that I think a lot of churches and、um, a lot of different groups need to hear. And this might cause、uh, some tension and some friction, but it might also cause a lot of growth, a lot of、um, maturity, and a lot of help. And it's going to be about partiality and about contentment. And I think those two are the two sides of the proverbial coin. On one side, God tells us. That we should not be partial towards others. In other words, how we treat others should be fair. We should be fair to everyone. This is to show love for everyone. We don't want to cause other people to stumble. We don't want our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, fellow Christians, to feel less loved, less affirmed, less、uh, cared for, less,、uh, less welcomed or accepted. But at the same time, God also teaches us to be content with what we have, to receive grace happily, joyfully, gratefully, and graciously. So, how do we handle all of this? Now, I'm going to focus on both, and I would first and foremost say two things. Number one, this is a very difficult issue or topic to balance when it comes to the practical application. If you're in a church, big church, small church, doesn't matter the size,、um, this is so. Touchy and so difficult to balance. And the second thing I would say is the goal shouldn't even really be to try to balance them in terms of application, but to apply whatever is most、uh, helpful at the time. Because many times in churches, this is a case to case basis, okay? So let me give you a few examples of what I mean.、Um, imagine if, let's say, there's a church fund, it's called a benevolence fund, it's for people who, church members who might have been going through some tough times. Uh, you know, it's COVID, pandemic, and all of that. And let's say there's this one individual, Mr. A, and Mr. A just got COVID, and so the church gave him some money for that. And then, event, let's just pretend、uh, Mr. A got COVID, got money from the church, and then his house got burned down, got money from the church again. And then, let's say、um, his, his father got into an accident, and there are medical bills he's got to pay, so got money from the church again from that. So maybe. In four months' time, Mr. A got money from the church every single month for very legitimate reasons. Does that mean that the church should give、uh, everyone else in the members、uh, the same amount of money in the next couple of months? Or that、uh, the amount should be the same? Obviously not.、Uh, and so, partiality can be tricky, it can be an issue.、Um, if, let's say,、um, one person had a birthday, so Uh, the church spent for the person and bought maybe, let's just say,、uh, what's my favorite? The Heavenly Medley Cake from Dessert Factory, which is so cool. And、um, the next month, someone else had a birthday and you know, he got maybe a mango float. And it's not a Heavenly Medley Cake.、Uh, is that how partiality really,、uh, or impartiality, partiality, is that how it's really applied? Yes and no. Maybe there are some circumstances that involve. Uh, or some factors that invol- got involved, why treatment can be a little bit different. But we got to be more practical than that, guys. What if, let's say, there's a hundred people in church and I wanted to bless one person because the person、uh, and I have a really good friendship, etc., etc. I want to bless the guy. And so I want to spend for him, let's say, a thousand pesos, okay? Does that mean if there's a church. Of a hundred members, I gotta spend a thousand pesos for every single member of the church. That means I gotta spend a hundred thousand just to bless this one guy. And that's not practical anymore, right? That's, that's so impractical. And so that might feel like partiality to other people. But for me, it's, I'm not trying to be partial. I'm not trying to show favoritism. I just wanna bless someone, you know? And, and so, That's something we got to start thinking about on a practical level.、Uh, there, there's, there's so many issues involved. And if I want to help someone or bless someone, that's on me as a giver. I know God commands us to not show favoritism, but the purpose of favoritism, the purpose of favoritism is actually to gain favor from someone else. The Bible says don't show favoritism because. Uh, you're doing that for the rich so that you get favor from them. So basically, the people were showing favoritism or partiality to the rich, to the people with authority, to the people with influence, to the people who were probably had、uh, government positions, government officials, so that they would maybe get a shortcut, maybe a tax,、uh, tax exemption, maybe a tax discount, you know, some under the table deals, or just don't pay this, bro, it's okay. You know, so it's kind of like that. It was, 
the purpose of why people were practicing favoritism and partiality was greed. It was for selfishness. It was for selfish gain. But if the purpose and the intention is godly, good, pure, it's just to bless others, then we should not, and again, I, I gotta say this clearly, we should not have a culture in church where people are held hostage by the fear of offending others because of the seeming favoritism that they are showing. In other words, I want to bless person A with a thousand pesos, but everyone else might get offended, so I'm just not going to give money at all. I'm just not going to give him a gift at all, just so that I won't offend others. Now, one way, of course, is to hide it. You know, like, hey, Mr. A, I'm going to give you this because I'm so blessed. I just want to bless you. Uh, it's a gift. But please don't tell others, okay? Because, you know, people might get offended and people might get kind of weird. Like, that shouldn't even be a culture in any church because we're supposed to rejoice with those who rejoice. Now, think about this for a moment. With God, does God show favoritism to His children? The answer is no. The Bible says God is, no, is not a respect of persons. And yet, different Christians experience different things. Other Christians are going through very, very severe challenges. Other Christians go through challenges that are not as difficult, not as painful. Other Christians get martyred. Other Christians are, you know, living a very comfortable, luxurious life. Does that mean God is showing favoritism? No. God loves all His children equally, but God has a specific plan and purpose for each one. And the Bible teaches us to be content. We're supposed to be content. We're supposed to be happy for others. So if, let's say, I'm in a church and I see someone getting blessed by someone else, I shouldn't go, Hala favoritism, I should get that also. You got a mango float, I gotta get a mango float. They they should all get a mango float. That's a, for me, that's, that's almost like envy, covetousness, maybe some insecurities are in there, some fears, uh, some, you know, whatever it is. The Bible says we rejoice with those who rejoice. So when God gives a Christian a promotion, we, we say, God, Praise God. Thank you, God, for promoting my brother. I'm so happy for him, brother. We're not going to say, Hey, God, you gave him a girlfriend. Where's my girlfriend? You gave him a wife. Where's my wife? He got promoted. Where's my promotion? We don't get salty with God. If we're not salty with God, we shouldn't get salty with other believers, other Christians. If they just want to want to bless other people, we should applaud and say, God, thank you for using my brother to bless my other brother. Thank you, God, for using my sister to bless my other sister. And this isn't just about money. It can be you spend more time with them than more than with me. You you give them more encouraging words than you give me those words. You treat them so nicely compared to how you treat me. You know, guys, we gotta be careful because that's that could be envy, that could be covetousness, that could be uh there there might be some insecurities in there that we gotta repent of, we gotta kill and be sanctified. Now, qualifier, disclaimer, and a balance. I'm not saying it's okay to just do this for others and not for others. Uh, as if other people don't care. It, here's what I'm saying. It's okay for us to bless A, B, C and not necessarily bless uh, X, Y, Z people if your intentions are truly pure. There are ways to do it. It's case to case. There are ways to do it in such a way that other people might feel offended so sometimes maybe we have to explain to them you know i just you know i don't have the budget but i, I really you know and so it's very case to case it requires a lot of wisdom a lot of sensitivity but there's got to be trust and there's got to be love in all the relationships especially in church so that there is no accusation of 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 that all right of of partiality and i know this is a confusing topic I don't know if I'm going to make a part two. Probably not anymore uh, because it's very, very case to case. But I hope you get the point, right? I'm going to extend a little bit on the time. I'm going to go beyond 10 minutes here. Uh, but I hope you get the point. The point is not um, everyone should tr treat everyone equally. And the point should also not be, I can do whatever I want because I'm the giver and you guys should just all just suck it up. Because both are extremes and both are not helpful. But rather... When we want to bless and give, we got to have a pure and godly motive to just bless others and do so in a way as best we can so that those that we don't bless don't feel unloved. Maybe if I've given to person A over and over and over and over and over again for the past year, 
maybe that's a little too much. Maybe other people are starting to feel a little, you know, insecure about your love for them and all of that, right? So we got to be, as givers, as people who want to show love, we got to do it in a way that we're sensitive to everyone else who sees it. Um, but at the same time, if we're the other party who is not receiving that kind of love or affection or whatever, we should also not immediately go, ha ha, partiality, sinful. But rather, we should be happy for the person. We should be praising God that God is using our brothers and sisters in Christ to give blessing to other brothers and sisters in Christ. And that, you know, God um, is using them. Maybe God will use us to do the same for others. Uh, many times also, I, I tend to ask the question, if you feel like, hey, how come he's doing all these wonderful things for all of them? What about me? And I would say, well, what about you? Have you done good things for that person? Have you done good things for other people as well? And if you have, then that shouldn't be something you hold on to and say, after everything I've done, you should do this for me. You know, that's that's a little, um, yeah, we shouldn't hold people hostage to any kind of culture where, you know, there's a kind of weird, um, ungodly utang na loob. And, and I know there's so many qualifiers and disclaimers in how I'm, I'm explaining this because it's really a very difficult thing uh, to balance, especially when it comes to application, right? Um, now, one, uh, two more things. First, if you're in a church, for example, a church setting, and uh, this issue comes up, it's always best to talk things through and to be as practical as possible while showing that wisdom and genuine love and care and concern for one another. Uh, so things have to get communicated and things have to get talked about. Don't just, you know, keep it in. Don't keep it a secret. These are things that has to be discussed uh, because it can make or break certain friendships, relationships, love, affection, etc., etc. Right? So that's one. Uh, the second thing I would say is this. When we, when we see God treat different Christians differently, we don't get salty. We trust that God loves us. And that kind of trust, we should kind of give it as well to our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We should say, you know, I trust them that they're not trying to make me feel bad. They're trying to make other people feel good. And if I don't need to feel good or encouraged today, why should I try to, you know, like, hey, encourage me too? You know, like it, it's just really weird. I've seen this in... in in my very, very, very old church before, it was so strange. It's like um, one person, one leader encouraged uh, another, a, a guy and said, oh, you know, I really see this gifting in you. And then we would go, what, what gifting do you see in me? Reminds me of Peter, you know, Peter and Jesus were talking and Peter just got reinstated after denying Christ three times, right? And then, you know, how, Peter, how much you love me? I love you more than these. I love you more than these. I love you more than these. You love me more than these? Yes, you're less your, you know, I do. All that. And then Peter goes, well, what about him? What about John? What about those guys? What about that dude? And Jesus says, don't, don't focus on them. Focus on yourself and me. Like, we have relationship. Our relationship is different from my relationship with them. In other words, partiality and impartiality, envy and covetousness. So here you've got the issue of partiality and impartiality. Here you've got the issue of covetousness and envy. The issue has nothing to do with equal outcome. It's got to do with equal love. But equal love does not necessitate equal outcome. I'll say that again. The issue is not about equal outcome. In other words, if I spent 1000 on you, doesn't mean I should spend 1000 on everyone else. I love everyone equally, but certain situations might cause me to give more to some people than to others. It doesn't mean I love them less. It, it, it just means there's a certain situation right now. There are certain factors involved where I can't do the same thing for every person. So don't believe in the lie that equal outcome necessitates... Oh, no, no. That equal love necessitates equal outcome. That's a lie. Don't believe in the lie that if there's unequal outcome, then there's obviously unequal love. That That's not how it works. All right? When my parents, I have two younger brothers. When my parents give my younger brother this or that, I'm happy for him. I'm not going to go, well, what about me? What about my share? I'm happy for my brother because I love my younger brother. If my other younger brother gets like a, a whatever gift, 
I'm happy for them because I love them. And I know that my parents love them. I also know my love. My parents love me. I'm not going to say my parents love them more than they love me because they gave him something more than they gave me. No, I, I trust my parents that they, they love us all equally. I love my brothers. Therefore, if they get a gift or whatever, a blessing from my parents, I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy for them. And when, when my parents give me something, I know and trust my brothers enough to know that they love me the same way and that they're going to be happy for me. Right? And we, and you know, kudos, props to my parents um, because they have tried so hard all the time to be super mindful to show as much equality in the outcome of how they show love. But there are times that the way they show love is not as equal, maybe in terms of money and finances and all of that, but maybe in other in other areas like uh, words of encouragement, how they relate to us, you know, how my, my dad and my mom relates to me, to my other brothers, are different because we're different people with different personalities and that's perfectly fine, totally cool, right? So that's what I mean. We just have to have trust, love, and open communication. Trust, love, open communication. When those three are clear, especially in a big culture, big church, big relationships, uh, or big groups with multiple relationships, everything gets sorted out. But remember, to the pure, everything is pure. If your intentions to bless others are godly, good, pure, and loving, and if you truly also love others, then this shouldn't even truly be an issue or a problem. And so that's something that I wanted to share and talk to you guys about. I didn't want to make part one and part two because then it's going to be very weird, like 10 minutes, five minutes. It's a total of, of 16 minutes, right? So I hope this helped. If you guys have more questions, concerns, clarifications, please feel free to make a message down in the comment section below or send me a private message. That's going to be totally cool. All right. God bless you guys. Have fun. Stay safe during COVID. God bless you.